Are we live? <laughs> We're live. Yeah. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to week four of the webinar series here. I'm uh, joined by uh, top field driver extraordinaire and uh, nostalgia funny car driver extraordinaire Cameron Ferre this week. Yep. Well, I'm here with my co-host, uh, the 1996 top alcohol uh, funny car champion, Todd Payton. U.S. And Nationals champion. So oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. What did I yeah. say? Yeah, just na uh, just champions. So oh, okay. Well. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm sorry. Two won it that year. Two-time IHRA world champion, right? Okay, we'll take that. Okay, yeah. All right. Is that better? Yeah, that's great. Okay. So, so based off of that, this whole thing should go just wonderfully. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> how can you how can you screw up after an intro like that? So we're gonna give it a go. Today, today's subject matter, week four here, is going to be everything that you want to know about your sportsman data logger, but we're afraid to ask, or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Um, and then I was off uh, goofing around last week while Cameron did the IQ three uh, drag dash one. So I believe you said the format is we'll go through what's in the box and just yeah. kind of take a look at what comes with the kit once you purchase it. Basically, you know, we get a lot of people that are intimidated by our stuff. They say, "Oh, there's a bunch of electronics, and I don't know how to, I don't know how to wire this stuff. I don't, you know." But the cool thing about the Sportsman is it's really, really user friendly because we, a lot of our stuff is user friendly as much as everybody doesn't think it is. Um, but uh, the reason why I say that is because you know once you once you use it and once you do it, it's you are be like, oh man, yeah, that was super easy. But the wiring, I know a lot of electronics can get very intimidating, and you know, I've, trust me, I've been there. So, but basically, we'll, well, I guess we'll start with you know why did we come up with the Sportsman? Um, the Sportsman, you know, for for years and years, Race Pack has you know kind of started with the pro stuff and you know kind of you know our V three hundred SD that we'll talk about later next week, but. Um, you know, the, everybody thought, oh man, race pack is just for the pros, just for the pros. Well, um, we kind of started to see a trend to where people were buying these really expensive data loggers just for their sportsman cars. So we said, you know what, we need to kind of see if there's a way that we can scale this down price wise because they're not using nitromethane, dual mags, and all this stuff on their on their super comp car, and you know, but they still want data. So uh, in steps the sportsman data logger um, it's a basically in general a, a quick reference it's a scaled down version of our v300 and when i say scaled down i mean um it can't be used with a magneto uh due to the the harnesses that come with it are not shielded like uh like a v300 would be um, it has a plastic housing instead of a an aluminum one like our v300 stuff so basically just things like that that we were able to get the cost out that won't wouldn't really in affect the integrity and the, and the performance of the logger but uh you know, they will allow it to be cheaper for, you know, guys out there that they're just looking to do some bracket racing and whatnot. So Right, right. And it's designed for those type of applications. Like you said, if you're running a magneto, if you're running supercharged, this is not the data logger for you. But if you right. are just interested in, you know, basically wanting to get acclimated with what a race pack data logger can do for you, getting you engine RPM, drive shaft RPM, the, mm -hmm. the you know, your your slippage based off of that, some basic G meter data, the sportsman unit is is a way of getting that without breaking the bank. For under a thousand dollars you have everything you need to get started for that. And then you can add on, obviously, beyond that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that, that's what's cool is, you know, everybody used to say, oh, man, that race pack stuff's expensive. But now I use the, the deal to where it's, you know, how can you say it's, you can't really say it's expensive anymore because for under $1,000, you know, heck, a, a set of rear slicks for your car is, is basically almost $1,000 these days. Well, depending on what you buy, but it could be that and more. Um, yeah. So it's, the cost thing isn't exactly a, you know, I guess a, a crutch anymore or anything. So well, it's not prohibitively expensive. Like we said, we've spent more on other aspects right. of our, our racing operation and the value of the data that you get out of this. I mean, it's you priceless. Can, well, you can save yourself so many runs mm -hmm. just by very quickly looking at something as simple as we said, engine and drive shaft RPM to figure out what my slippage is. Is oh my yeah. torque converter doing what uh, what my guy told me it's doing? Should I be launching yep. at a different RPM? Things like that. They'll, that'll save you runs down the track. Mm -hmm. Every year at PRI, I get a I get a guy that comes up and says, man, I'm so glad I bought this because it saved me, you know, thousands of dollars because I would go to the track. Last year I went to the track seven times and I still couldn't figure out what my converter was doing and it cost me thousands of dollars in fuel, tires, gas to get their hotel, etc. And so here we are with, with the sportsman. So I guess we could kind of get to it. Yeah, doesn't that tie in with our little tagline about stop guessing? That's right. Stop <laughs> guessing, start winning. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like Cameron said, so what we'll do is we'll quickly run through what comes in the box when you order your sportsman unit in this attractive race pack box here. We have 
something that's almost never read, which is the quick start guide uh, for the sportsman unit. In here it details all the components that come in the kit so you can check them off as you go through them. Uh, again, there's there's actual, I don't know. There's photos, guys. We, we, <laughs> tried, we tried to make it like when uh, you buy your Apple mm -hmm. device. It's just some photos, some basic instructions, and not a manual that's 20 pages thick. If you want the manual that's 20 pages thick, it's it'll be in there in the in the USB stick. Exactly. So. so we've got that. We've also got a little insert that indicates where you can find all the helpful videos mm -hmm. for not just the Sportsman unit, but the IQ3, all of our products. So stage direction there. Sorry. <laughs> the the right. secure bubble wrap here. Right. So <laughs> um, as Cameron had mentioned, so there's the, there's the uh, there you go. No, thank you. you. Thank I you. Just, I, I didn't watch last week's webinar, so I don't know. <laughs> so we have the, um, again, the USB memory stick contains the data link software. Um, and in here, if you watched one of the earlier webinars, we covered on how you're going to uh, install this software and kind of run through where the uh, sportsman configuration and all that is located on it. So, so it's right there is where I need to place it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, all right, so that's that component. I'll move that off to the side next. In the package, we get our drive shaft sensor, which is going to give us that all important uh, drive shaft RPM information. Now, one thing we need to mention with the Sportsman unit, you need to order, if you're going to you know, look for your drive shaft information, you need to order separately the drive shaft collar that's appropriate for the center section in your car. So yes, a lot of people didn't uh, don't realize that these these used to come with drive shaft collars, but uh, with the increased, uh, you know, shelf life of this stuff, or you know, a lot of our other dealers and whatnot, it's really hard to keep something on the shelf with, uh, you know, 17 different collar sizes. So what we did is we decided to lower the price a little bit and basically take it out of the kit. So uh, it's you're not paying any more or any less. You're just you're just buying it as a separate part number. So whether you're buying it from us or one of our race pack dealers out there. Um, it's just a matter of we just need to know what size you're looking for. Uh, there's right. the common tons. sizes, yeah, yeah. But the, the the four most common sizes we run across are the Mark Williams and the Strange right. Center sections, large and small pinions. So mm -hmm. that usually ends up being, you know, one point eight one two to and uh, two point one two five for the Strange and a one point eight seven five and a two one eight seven yep. for the uh, Mark Williams collar. Yeah. So that's and the measurement that he's Todd's talking about is is when you have your third member and we say, oh, can you measure for that? It's just in front of the pinion seal right behind the yoke. Um, there's usually a little gap in between there where before the, the U-joint bolts up into the little little deal with all the U-bolts. Uh, just that gap in between there. We just need the outer diameter of that actual uh, spacing. And you take a set of calipers or, mm -hmm. you know, I've even seen people use measuring tapes to get it kind of close and then uh, we guess from there. But we recommend a caliper just clamp it on there and you know it should say 2.125 2187 etc yeah. so yeah sometimes I've, i know it's obviously not the easiest place to get to in some of the cars and so long as you know your center section if you know it's a mark williams rear end i've had the guy go under there with the calipers and he gets in close i said is it under an inch or over an inch yeah. oh, it's over an inch okay well then we know exactly what it is so yeah perfect. but anyhow so continuing on, we've got uh, the hardware package. So we've got the mount feed in there, the, everything you need to secure the, uh, the sportsman unit because uh, you'll see when you get the unit that the plastic uh, housing doesn't have the inserts or anything. All that's contained in here along with the mounting feed, so you can go ahead and mount that accordingly. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a USB, oh, let me get the bubble wrap out of here. So our USB to serial adapter is next in there. Now this is used basically to communicate out, uh, with the sportsman data logger. We'll get to the programming cable here in a minute, but what happened, the reason we have this in the kit is that most computers nowadays no longer come with a nine pin, what they call a serial port connection, uh, basically any that have been built in the last decade or so. So um, this basically replicates that by plugging into a USB port on one end and then it has the nine pin serial cable which connects to the programming cable we'll see in a moment. Yep. And uh, as, as we go through this stuff, guys, if you have any questions, uh, we'll do our best to try to answer them as we go, but uh, we will go through at the end and kind of run through some questions and whatnot. But uh, we'll do, there is a little bit of a lag, so bear with us when it comes to uh, the actual questions themselves. <laughs> so Okay, so in conjunction, let me move the prop here, in conjunction with the USB to serial adapter we just spoke about, here's the actual programming cable that'll go with the Sportsman unit. So again, has the nine pin serial connection on it. Has the uh, has the three and a half millimeter jack on it, 
that plugs into the side of the unit. So we'll cover that here in a little bit, but those two basically go together, that and your USB to serial adapter that we just had. So a lot of guys just click them together and then they just leave them together so that way they don't know where one is and not the other. Uh, just put it in the top drawer of your toolbox or cabinet, leave it in there. and Because you're always gonna kinda wanna reference that as you go. So when you're doing any sort of programming, adding, removing a sensor, uh, changing the pulses per revolution for your drive shaft, anything that you need, you're always gonna need that serial cable, so kinda keep that handy. Then what we've got next are the two main harnesses. So we'll look at the first one here that comes up, the larger of the two, which is the uh, pre, uh, pre-terminated drive shaft uh, cable, as well as the orange uh, wire. Uh, Cameron, you uh, talked about the orange wire in one of the earlier webinars. Yeah. Why don't you tell us what that one's used Everybody, for? Everybody, the number one question I get all the time at the racetrack is, what does the orange wire, where, where do I put the orange wire? All this orange wire is is a 12-volt event marker, which is already set up by us in the software to read trans brake event. What that means is whenever, if you hook this wire to 12 volts, it will put a line on the graph that will show you that that wire has 12 volts. So basically, if you're looking at trans brake, when you push the button, it's going to put a line on the graph to tell you that it's pushed. When you release, it will drop out. So from there, what basically allows you to do is to make sure that your delay is working. So if you're, you know, you put 30 in the box and your car is reacting, you know, a tenth later, then then you could have something going on in your box, or your car just takes that much longer to react, etc. So, does it affect the use of the unit? No, I've even seen get people get super intimidated for some reason and cut it off because they panic because they don't know where to go. I wouldn't recommend cutting it off because you can use it for a lot of other things if you don't want to use it as a trans brake. Uh, if I've seen people use it uh, on a brake switch, like on a micro switch, they can wire to it and they put it behind their brake pedal to see how much they, they were on the brakes. Uh, at the finish line, I've seen people use it as a wide open throttle switch on their carburetor, uh, you know, to see when they're lifting as well. Uh, a lot of that stuff is really important in bracket racing. So um, it's something that, you know, if you might not use it right at the beginning, it's something that uh, I would recommend keeping because you're probably going to want to use it in the, end, in the end game and you don't want to be extending wires. It's easier to uh, I guess cut them in short then yeah go from there, if so. you don't use it maybe just coil it up there you go yeah yeah so and uh, you know there are some you you'll want to check with some of the uh, with your rule book and just make sure because some categories and some sanctioning bodies yes. don't allow you to uh, monitor the release of the trans brake so again that would be an excellent opportunity to use it as a wide right. open throttle switch or, or brake switch or something like that mm -hmm. So the other harness we have then is uh, includes the main uh, power and ground to the unit. Uh, it also has a blue wire, which is the record button activation. If you w choose um, to record off of uh, button press as opposed to engine RPM activation, which is something we'll cover here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on there as well is also the yellow tack wire, which connects to the tack output on your ignition system, gives us the engine RPM readings we need. Uh, it's also got the fuse and everything built in line to protect the unit just in case we have a voltage issue or a power issue. Yeah, now, and, a, and a lot of things that I've, I've noticed, guys, is this stuff is, we try to make this as, uh, I guess, foolproof as possible. Uh, we started actually terminating the drive shaft sensor for you, so that way you literally just have to click it into the drive shaft sensor. You don't have to do any crimping of connectors and pins and all that stuff. Uh, kind of the same thing with the power tackering cord. You literally can crimp a butt connector on it and or ring terminal depending on how your car is, stick it in there and, and off you go. So and there is I talked about this in the drag dash last week. There is a fuse built into the harness as well. We really recommend you using that. It's just a five amp fuse. The race pack does not take very much voltage and amperage, but if you're popping a 5 amp fuse, you probably have something else wrong in the system and don't go and put a 15 or 20 amp fuse in there because then you're going to start potentially frying stuff. So if you know that it's just a recommendation I've I've seen people actually running these like huge I'm like why are you even running a fuse? So <laughs> um, it's just, just something to that I've noticed and picked up. But yeah, it has all the all the ring terminals in here. It has a a tack uh, tack lead a lot of guys when you pick up the tack, you if you have an analog gauge, you have a manual a manual needle gauge in there you have to you have to wire the tack output we supply that Y in there as well so it's all it's all pretty much pre-done for you okay so what else we got in here oh hey there's the bracket for the drive shaft sensor itself that it comes with the kit so you don't have to fashion anything uh, at your shop or at the racetrack out of a 
a Coke can or a beer can there or whatever you you've got access to at the time. Yep. And this, uh, just real quick, these, I think we talked about it last week as well. This just goes on to the third member on, on the pumpkin there. It goes, you undo one of that, slide it on, and then this is an adjustment here so you can slide it wherever your collar is on your, on your yoke. So it's, uh, you know, real easy. But the only time I've ever really seen these not work is uh, on potentially like a Dana 60 or something like that because sometimes those might not work and you have to fab something else yourself. But usually eight out of ten times, most people have a four to nine inch style in their dragster door car. So. Okay. Um, we could do this part before yep. we get to the sure. piece de resistance. Sure. Um, so this will also come in the kit. We'll cover it in a second here, the SD card uh, that comes with, uh, is internal in the unit. Um, this is basically an SD card reader. Several, um, most laptops will have a spot on them for an SD card to go in, but you'll see here in a minute when we show you the SD card that goes in the data logger, there's a little uh, cap on the end of it that might prevent it from engaging all the way. So we include this with every kit. That way you can just plug it into a USB port and it'll read the SD card easily. Um, you know, uh, also very easy, like we said, most every, well, every laptop we see and every PC we see nowadays has a USB port, so this just makes it easier to access the data on anything. Right, and something, another little thing that I thought of, uh, when people open these, they don't know what it is. We get calls that say, well, what's this black thing that says Transcend on it? Transcend is just the brand that we're using. It's just a generic uh, USB to serial, uh, I'm sorry, USB reader. Uh, it's USB, but it reads the SD card. But all you literally have to do is take the cap off. There, when you pull the cap off, there's a USB on the end, and you stick it in your computer. Uh, just something that uh, it's black, so sometimes you can't really tell that it pulls off. But you pull off the end and stick it in your laptop. So. Okay, and other than the decals and the little warning that we spoke about earlier about, please do not use it with a magneto. Mm -hmm. And there is a mounting template that comes in there. So if you're trying to fashion any type of a mount, that comes with it. And then we have some suggested base, basic uh, information on how you could add sensors to it. So that documentation is in there. But now we'll get to the main part itself, the, the Sportsman data logger. And make sure I can get this place. As you go there. Yeah, let's put some of this documentation back. Let's see if I can get if that gets placed accordingly on the on the screen thank you oh and remember guys uh, race pack pays contingency for uh, NHRA national events so if you want to run her up we supply you contingency stickers if you have multiple cars and you're running multiple data loggers and you lost the stickers just feel free to call us and we can get you more so the sportsman unit itself um, as Cameron had said earlier <laughs> Was, uh, it's in a plastic housing, um, again, just as a, as a method of cost reduction. So the basic unit here with the uh, VNet port on it. So if we had, um, I think we touched on this in previous webinars too, any of the VNet ports or any of the VNets uh, that you're going to add, whether you add a carb pressure or trans temp or anything like that, would be uh, accommodated by basically taking the VNet terminator cap off, an extension cable, and then the VNet modules that you want to go ahead and add on there, O2s, whatever. On the end of the unit, uh, we talked earlier about that programming cable, so that comes in here with the little plug on the end, which is right beside where the SD card is. So you pull that out, that's where that 3.5 millimeter or headphone jack mm -hmm. programming cable plugs in. And then the SD card that we talked about with the USB SD card reader. So the SD card, as we had said, and let's see if I can get hold that without covering the whole thing. So <laughs> it's uh, you can see the cap with the little seal on there that helps secure the unit, uh, uh, secure the SD card in the unit. So if we get out there and rattle the tires a little bit, it doesn't throw it out or anything like that. <laughs> um, but again, fits in this way. Don't please don't put it in with the gold contacts up. That needs to be basically facing down when it goes in, provided that you're looking at the the unit with the decal on top. Um, from the factory, these are set, uh, basically we, we orientate the unit so that the G meter is reading uh, as if the data logger was installed with the SD card pointing towards the front of the vehicle. So if you're, let's say you put it in the dragster, you mount it so that the SD card is facing the rear of the vehicle, it's very easy to go ahead and basically you just reverse the accelerometer or the Excel G meter 
uh, in there and tell it instead of plus one when it's accelerating, it's actually minus one. But that's something we'll cover probably in the coming weeks. But that's a very common thing. Don't panic uh, if, you know, like I said, we, we normally say that this has to be facing the front of the car. If it's getting mounted 90 degrees or it's getting mounted 180 degrees, we can accommodate that. The only, the only time we run into a situation is if somebody mounts it vertically then we'll lose one of the two G meters because there is no vertical G meter in this unit. So mm -hmm. if you mount it this way, you're going to lose your lateral movement. You'll still get acceleration. And, you know, if you mount it this way, you're going to, I'm sorry, m mount it this way in the vehicle, assuming this is the front of the car, you're going to lose acceleration but pick up lateral movement. So just things to keep in mind when you're mounting the unit in the car. Yeah. Real quick, uh, there's a Quick question here: uh, Can you use speedometer pulses instead to pick up drive shaft RPM? Uh, no, depending on depending on the polarity, if there's magnets, or we have to use a magnet uh, to pick up on our sensor. Uh, you might be talking about something else there. Um, and then we also have: Do we have a a system that uses a wired sensor inputs rather than the VNet? Technically, yes. Our IQ3 drag dash or any of our dash units, some of them come with analog sensors that is built into the, s the harness already. Um, they're just single wire sensors, so they're not as reliable and robust as our VNet stuff. Um, but yes, we do offer some with uh, temp sensors and oil pressure like our IQ3 drag dash. Um, then one more here, see here. Uh, is there any reason uh, you do not get rid of the serial pin connectors and just make a three and a half inch millimeter to USB? Um, yes, uh, this technology was done before all of that, so um, to change it, it would be a whole, we'd have to redesign the whole board and everything, so that's why we supply you the USB to serial adapter in the in the kit, so you don't have to worry about going to get one. It works with our software, etc. cetera. Um, plenty of COM port numbers and all that stuff, but yeah, like for instance, our IQ3 drag dash that we talked about last week, that is done off of a USB to micro USB, so as, as we go, it, you know, we change the stuff with the times as well. So, um, and then basically just talking, uh, you know, elaborating on what Todd has talked about, a few things that I've seen in the field here. So, a lot of people call and ask, they say, you know, the thing powers on, but I'm not getting any recording or anything like that. Um, pay special attention to the sticker on here. It's not just a logo sticker. It actually says drive shaft RPM 12 volt event for this port and power tack record input on this port. These are keyed to be the exact same connectors, so a lot of times people accidentally swap them, causing the power to either the unit to actually power up, but it's not going to record anything drive shaft, or it won't even initialize the recording, but it will power up. So a lot of people say, "Well, I, I got this and it powers up, but it's not doing anything." Well, a lot of times these are just swapped. So make sure that in the harness, it's actually there's a a heat shrink label on the two harnesses it says power tack and record and drive shaft 12 volt event so kind of hard to mess up at that point um and then todd touched on the, the I don't know if you can oh there see you that. go yeah there's a little there's a little label in there but uh todd also talked about uh the vnet expandability uh the sportsman data logger can withstand up to six additional vnet sensors such as uh trans temp oil pressure, pan vacuum, carb pressure, et cetera, air fuel, um, pretty much whatever you want to you know, add to the system. It's not like, oh, I have to get this one certain one or whatever. It's That's all user defined and that's all up to you. Now, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have seen, we're actually running a special right now that uh, allows you to extend that to, you can buy more channels. So if you run out of, of channels, like say you put six pressures on it and oh man, I just want one more or whatever. Well. You can purchase more channels, but right now if you purchase a Sportsman Data Logger until the end of the month, you're going to get four free extra channels, which is like a $300 value for free. So something to keep in mind as you, as you watch this. But um, yes, you can add six additional pressures or temperatures to it. Um, and when you do that, you're going to basically you have an extension cable and you have this cap. This isn't just a dust cap as well. You want to make sure that this cap, uh, you put this at the end of the line. So generally, you're going to have a... A VNet extension cable that you'll purchase depending on where you're mounting this in your vehicle. You'll run that to your engine compartment and then you'll snap all of your additional sensors together in one clump and then you'll put the cap on the end of the line and basically there's little pins in here that are terminating resistors that tell the information to go back from, you know, it sends out a signal and then it tells it to turn around and go back to record it into the data logger. So um, those are a couple 
couple things that I've kind of seen in the field. Um, Todd touched on it too. Make sure you don't put the SD card in upside down. Uh, some people actually like to purchase their own SD card or they stepped on it or whatever. And, you know, they, for whatever reason, they don't purchase it from us because they're in the field and we're closed on a Saturday or something, which is fine. These are just generic four gigabyte SD cards. But something to keep in mind is with this being keyed, you need to make sure you take take out the SD card the correct way. They're just double sided taped in there and you have to use this cover. So pull it out, stick it in. Ours, the, the discs that we sell, actually comes with the, the little double sided tape on there. But you know, sometimes you can just stick it in there and but it'll kind of want to pull for, out, I guess. For $29, it's real easy. So with yeah. the SD card and the holder. There you go. There, yeah, some Always carry a spare because you absolutely. will go to the staging lanes and say, I yep. think that's sitting back in the trailer. Yes, we have a lot of customers that actually have one taped to, like in a door car, taped to one of the frame rails just in case. But um, So basically we can kind of start talking about uh, the software and everything. So when you get this, Essentially, it's all programmed, provided that you don't uh, add anything like we talked about, pressures and temperatures and things of that nature. Now, so we're, we'll discuss that in later weeks as far as adding and removing sensors, but we're, today we're just going to talk about kind of the basic unit. So when you get this, in that little USB thumb drive, you have your software, your manuals, etc. So you're essentially going to stick it into your laptop computer and click, uh, it'll have, there's a few files in there, one's going to say manuals, one's going to say data link 2. Data link 2 is the name of our race pack software that you'll just basically want to install it. So you double click on it, it will you know, prompt you through all of the security stuff, are you sure you want to do this, uh, are you sure you agree to the licensing, yes, yes, etc. And then it, there's going to be a, a point to where it's not going to let you go any further until you click what type of data logger you have. It basically is going to give you a list. Does it say what type of race pack are you using with this software? V300, IQ3, uh, Sportsman, Drag Dash, etc. All you have to click on is the Sportsman. Even if you're using a Sportsman data logger and an IQ3 display only dash, you only need the Sportsman config because everything is programmed through the Sportsman config because the Sportsman is actually the brains of everything. So after you install the software, uh, you're just going to need to basically open up your car configuration. And the basic, the basic uh, screen there you're going to have, um, when you open up the Datalink software, you'll, you'll get an icon on your, on your desktop. Usually you double click on it and the first thing you're going to pop up, it's going to look like everything's grayed out. Well, that's because you haven't selected on anything and you don't it doesn't the software doesn't know where to go so w remember when we said when we talked about which which uh you open up the data oh, software, sorry. oh todd's talking to me sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> so uh it's going to ask you what um you know what config do you want to use so what we would like to do is once you have the basic screen you're going to uh, open up your car configuration and when you do that you basically just go to the top of the screen and you're going to click file and you're going to click about halfway down it's going to say open car configuration and when you do that it's going to ask you what type of configuration folder and generally if you're just running one you're going to have it's just going to say sportsman in the left box you're going to click on that and it's going to say config files selected for folder if you have multiple cars you might have created dual you know have a dragster or super gas whatever but come from the factory it'll say sportsman config and you just click ok and when you click OK, it's going to pop up a whole bunch of little boxes that have a bunch of stuff. And from there, you're going to have Sportsman, Engine RPM, DS RPM, stands for Drive Shaft RPM, a, a ratio channel, and a few other like spare ratios and stuff like that. I get a lot of questions. Everybody says, well, how can I see all this stuff, like these spare ratios and these aux digital channels? Do not worry about that stuff. That is for later use. Uh, you don't... 99.9% .9 of the people don't see them and when you download a run they will not show up. You're only seeing everything that is in your configuration window. So if this is where you do all your settings and everything. So you're going to see a few thing, extra things that you're not going to see normally. So but as as you see on the bottom there um, it has all your session, run info, weather tabs. It's kind of like manila folders. You have all that stuff. Everything gets stored you know in a sequence for a reason. So you have your year folder down there, it's going to say 2017, you can have your tracks, etc. Um, and down down just to the right there, um, there's a set sportsman time and date 
button. So you can actually take the SD card out of the, out of the, your Sportsman unit and tag it with a time and date so that way it matches your computer. So that way when you go to the track, it's, you know, what's today, May 17th, and, you know, at 5.15, you made a run. So that way if you had multiple runs on your card, you know where it's, it's actually coming from. So um, in order to do that, all you do is take the SD card out of the unit, stick it in the laptop with your SD card reader that we supply, and click set sportsman time and date and what it does is it puts a little stamp on this you go back to the data logger stick it in turn the power on and it transfers that information and it'll store it in there for you know there's a really tall or a really small internal battery in here that will s store the time and date for you um, kind of the same function uh, there's just below that there's one that says clear data files for memory card same process you're just kind of going the opposite way if you want to if you got these cards will hold like 200 runs, so don't worry about if you're gonna, you know, overload the deal or whatever. So you just literally pull the card out, stick it into uh, into the data logger, and clear data files from memory card. And you can you have the option of wiping them all out or deleting a couple. If you're gonna delete anything, I highly recommend just deleting all of them at once, right. because if you don't, it will mess up the number sequence, and you won't know which is your newest run. Generally. Uh, something to keep in mind is the highest number on your SD card is your newest run. So, but if you start deleting like number five and number twenty-nine, and you have forty runs on there, it it will put the newest run at number five if you deleted it or right. something like yeah, that. So it gets a little confusing. It, yeah, try to find whatever the first available number is. So, and that's uh, as Cameron's saying, delete them all off once you've downloaded to the PC or your laptop. Then there's no real need unless you know you want to keep it as a backup. But quite often I just back up the PC, you know, back up the race pack data folder on there. Right. Um, and it's it's better to go ahead and just clear everything off because especially if you're pressing a button and it's as you said, let's say we've got 200 runs on there, it's going to take it a long time to try and figure out what to call that next file. And we've had people call and say the data logger is not picking up until midway through low gear. Well, how many runs are on the card? Well, I got 127 runs. Okay, let's clear them off, go out and make a lap, and no problem. Yep. So, moving on from there, uh, we'll talk about, like I said, this is all pre-programmed. It's pre-programmed uh, to use a two-magnet drive shaft collar and to be done, to be used with a record button. If you want to change that, we'll talk about that here a little bit. Um, it's a few down. You're going to have channel mode, pull-up resistor, VNet rate, like I said, you're not going to need to mess with any of this stuff other than pulses per revolution. So in order to change it from 2 to 8, or even 4, I think some of the callers out there, like Mark Williams, makes a 4 magnet, um, you're just going to select the pulses per revolution line, and it's going to highlight it in blue. Just to the right, it's going to say pulses per revolution again. You literally type in 4 or 8 or 2, whatever you have, and then from there, with the serial cable hooked up to your data logger and the power turned on, you're going to select send configuration and what that does is everything that you've sent or changed in the laptop is going to send the information to the data logger so that way it knows what's going on. And from there that's pretty much anything that you're ever going to change in the data logger itself you have to do it in the laptop but you have to send the configuration so if you're adding or removing a sensor, if you're changing the pulses, if you're changing it from engine RPM to record button, something like that you always have to take the information and tell the data logger. The data logger is dumb, the computer, the laptop is smart, so you have to always kind of walk it to, to get it going. So, um, And of course, again, we supply all this stuff so you don't have to go running around all the stores to try to find it. So after we had the pulses per revolution changed, but keep in mind, again, it comes factory set up with two pulses, and most people already have it done, so you don't need to worry about it. Um, another thing that... Uh, it's kind of easy to a lot of people like my car, my personal car. I always forget to push the button, so you, <laughs> you you spend the money and you invest in the data logger, and it's no good to you until it actually starts recording data down the track. So there's a way that uh, you can actually change it to set different parameters to see how the data logger is recording. Uh, now, again, we talked about it comes with a button. It's preset for a button. If you don't want to use the button or if you already installed it and you're, man, I always forget to push that damn thing, well, it's really easy to change. So in the config file in your channels, you have a, an important one. It says sportsman. That is what houses all of your 
hardware information and, and certain things like that. So in order to change the pulses per revolution, all you would need to do would be right click on that channel. And again, just kind of like what we talked about with the drive shaft RPM, it's going to open up a whole input channel, channel parameters box that's going to have a whole slew of intimidating information. But there's only, again, there's only a few things that you need to worry about in this initial setup. So in the bottom left corner, there's a system options box. About halfway down in there, there's going to be a section that says record enable channel. What that means is how do you want the data logger to record? Do you want it to record off of a button, engine RPM, wide open throttle, etc. We highly recommend only leaving it on engine RPM or a button. If sometimes people like to put it on the trans brake or something like that, but what happens is every time you back up, the thing starts recording, or they put it on a wide open throttle switch when they deck it on the starting line, it it just doesn't usually work out very well. So we always recommend using either a certain engine RPM or the button that we supply. But to change it to a certain engine RPM, it's just a matter of clicking on that record enable channel and it will highlight it in blue just like the drive shaft RPM. And then just to the right, it's gonna say record enable channel again. And it should say record button X78. I get a lot of questions, I don't know about you Todd, but mm -hmm. I get a lot of questions, what is X78? It's just code, don't worry about it. It's for the engineer nerds that, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's fine. Yeah. So, Yeah, record button is for us humans to read. Yes. X78 represents the record button as far as yes. the sportsman. I couldn't even tell you what X78 means and I've worked here for 10 years. <laughs> so, but uh, record button is all you need to worry about. So to change it, you just click the little drop down arrow and you have a whole slew of stuff. You got logger volts, trans brake. Um, if you scroll up, you're gonna see engine RPM X200. The X200, it doesn't mean times 200. No. It just means it's just code because all this back end stuff, because uh, you're changing hardware stuff, it's don't worry about, just worry about the engine RPM part. You click on engine RPM, and then all you need to do is you need to set what engine RPM it's going to be. So, my personal car and my super comp car, I have my my record channel set to. I have a, a burnout rev limiter, and I have it set at 6,400 RPM. Now, I drive my car to the lanes. So it's something that I didn't want to put the value at like 2000 because every time I'd start the thing it would and shut it off to move in the staging lanes it's going to write a file. So I put it at my burnout so what happens is is I push a button do the burnout. I usually get about half of the burnout and me backing up and everybody says, "Well, why why do you need to record the burnout?" It automatically does it and more data is better than anything. So so basically there's a line in there that says start recording when channel exceeds value. From there, you can type in whatever you want. 1,000, 50 RPM. I per personally use 6,400. You could use 5,000, whatever, it doesn't matter. But after you change that, again, because you change the setting in here, you need to click the send configuration button from your serial cable to the data logger. Anything that you do in the laptop, you need to send over to the data logger. Right, you don't have to send these separately because you've said we've, we've changed two things. We've changed the record enable parameter and then we've changed the start recording. You can make both of those changes and then just click the send configuration button once. Yep. Um, you can also do it individually. It's just a little bit quicker, a little bit easier if you do them. Uh, make all the changes and then send the configuration a single time. Um, going back to what Cameron was saying about engine RPM activation, uh, we kind of alluded to the fact that it took the data logger a little while to record when there were a bunch of files on there, but by default, the unit initializes itself once it sees the, the input to record. So whether it's off a button, whether it's off of engine RPM, you say you see it partway through the burnout. That's because it takes it three to five seconds by the time it initializes, checks all the VNet and everything, and starts the actual record process. So that's, again, why you don't set it for your launch RPM or anything like that, because it'll it'll be delayed by a couple of seconds. Right. So you might miss some data. Yep, and prime example, I was just looking at some of the comments here for you guys. Uh, it says, mine says X78. <laughs> so there you go. Um, don't worry about that. It's just code. It should say engine RPM, or I'm sorry, uh, button at that point. It'll say <laughs> record button uh, for X78. If you want to change it to engine RPM, it'll say X200 next to it. Uh, but all you got to worry about is the verbiage. Um, and uh, let's see. That's a good question there from Kendall. Oh, yeah, Kendall. <laughs> can you use shock sensors? Looks like Don, uh, one of our dragsters for sale dealers, already answered it. But yes, you can. Uh, this unit unlike our V300, does not come with a shock sensor enabled port. 
um, but you can actually add it to it. So you can purchase uh, a high-speed module that we that we actually would run off of the VNet. It's basically a transmitter box that would allow you to run the linears and the shock travels just off of the VNet stuff. So yes, you can. It's just an added upgrade. The V300 basically comes with that port. That's why it's a little bit more expensive. But uh, we saw a lot of need for a lot of the four link guys and super comp and top dragster and stuff. They have sportsmen's, so we decided to be able to create a module that allows that. So um, let's see from there. Um, earlier, I had a guy that was talking about his uh, his power grid, and he said, "Can a can a race pack sportsman can it be used with a power grid? And can I stream the channels?" Yes, you can. Um, you would just have to purchase. There's a little T that comes out, or a little tail that comes out of the power grid controller. Um, that you would have to purchase an additional, I think it's a $59 T cable that will tie it into the VNet port on here. Now, there's a few things that you need to keep in mind when you do that. Uh, we've talked about it basically the whole time. The Sportsman unit can only withstand six additional sensors. The power grid can stream up to, I think it's 12 or 14 channels just alone in the power grid, not including your pressures or temperatures or whatever. So you need to make sure if that's what you're doing, you either have purchased more channels if you want to stream everything. But the cool thing about the MSC power grid is you can actually turn off the channels that you don't want to output. They'll still work in the power grid controller, but they're not going to output the information. So a lot of the... A lot of the super comp bracket racer guys, they're really just interested in, in the timing, the overall timing. They want to see if, you know, I pulled out a certain amount or whatever, and you just want to stream that one channel, boom. You just have to turn the output on from the MSD, and, and you're going to get just that one channel. Um, but just make sure that that uh, whatever you whatever you want to see from the power grid is something that uh, is gonna you want to see on the race pack. All we're doing there is just trying to allow you to merge all this stuff into one graph so that way it's a lot easier for you guys to do tuning and, and stuff like you're going to want to see your drive shaft RPM when you're talking about pulling timing out stuff like that so we're just basically merging them into one so um, but yes you can turn the outputs off and still use the stuff in, in the MSD so that's something that, uh, that is a good one so but uh, let's see if we have any more questions here right quick I turned mine on but it seems to make noise so I'm not going <laughs> to do that again Let's see. When you use engine RPM, do you have to use the record wire? Technically, no. Uh, you do not have to use the blue the blue wire in there. That will basically obsolete that wire, so you don't have to wire it in if you're using some sort of because it's triggering off of not a uh, you're not grounding the two wires with the button anymore. So basically, it's. I mean, you can leave it wired in the car, but it's not going to hurt anything if it's just kind of dangling there. Or can go back to yeah. just leaving it coiled up yeah. somewhere out of the way. You can leave it coiled up for future use. A lot of people, you know, they'll sell the Sportsman and, and purchase a V300 to upgrade or something. It's it's always good to kind of leave the wires in there for, you know, helps the resale value. But uh, uh, let's see what else we got here right quick. Um... Do you think of anything else, Todd, off the top of your head there? I think we've pretty much beat this one into the ground, Cameron, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, there's there's, there's certainly, you know, we, we try to hit the basics here. Um, you know, like I say, it's a... Uh, for an entry-level unit, giving you the basic data, uh, as Cameron said, everything you require is in the kit, save for the drive shaft collar, which you need to make sure that you order. Uh, when you order the the sportsman unit, get the appropriate drive shaft collar, and that's it. I mean, we've I've I've been at the races. I've seen people come up to the trailer uh, and buy the sportsman kit because they have a question and they're trying to figure out what their car is doing. They'll come by, they'll buy a sportsman kit. They, I did one last year. A guy came up and said, "The car's got a miss. I've got to figure it out." He bought a sportsman and a single channel air fuel sensor and came back the next day and said, I can't believe what I've learned on this thing and what we found w with the car. There you go. He uh, probably stopped guessing and started <laughs> winning too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> Do uh, we get paid every time? Yeah, I, no, I should though. I need to get, the, <laughs> get all my residuals and get that figured out. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Uh, I think next week, let's see, what are we doing? What are we talking about next week? Uh, installation and setup of your V300 data logger. So we've kind of just going moving up each each week here kind of talking about the same thing we'll go through the box show you the harness show you little differences between our basic user stuff versus a little bit more advanced it 
just going to come with more more options and, and things like that. But uh, we appreciate uh, you guys watching, and I guess we'll see you at the races, huh?